Okay. What's up? Welcome back to the vlog. Yeah, I can't believe I'm doing this twice in one, honestly, one month. I uploaded a video last Monday, but I'm gonna try to get out videos every Monday because now that I got an iPad, I like know what I'm doing. Like I can easily just record, put the videos on my little movie creator, put it together and upload. So it's so much easier than trying to do it through my computer because storage was just getting filled up. But now like after I record, I can just delete everything once like the video's uploaded and then I'm starting from a clean slate every time. So I haven't had any troubles yet, but I'm sure they will come. So I'm making this video because Monday I start my SIBO diet. Um, I've said this in my previous video, but in case you're new here, I am a bikini competitor. I am trying to do my pro debut. I've been in off season for the past year, but I have a lot of gut issues and I just need to get that taken care of before I start a prep for my pro debut, just so I can start from a clean slate and I can bring my absolute best physique possible. So that being said, um, what I have is SIBO and that's kind of why I'm making this video. I'm going to do like a weekly update for y'all. So this is week one. Well, Monday's week one. It's Friday right now, but I just want to answer all the questions y'all have regarding my pro or my, um, journey so far and like the process that I've gone through to get to the point where I am, what my protocol is going to look like, who I'm working with, um, my symptoms, just everything I've kind of been through. And maybe it will help y'all in some of your situations because I know Gut issues are very, very common in the bodybuilding world and just in general. And so maybe I can give you some good insight. But right now I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym later. So I'm kind of in a hurry. I'm going to just show y'all. I thought I might as well just show y'all since I'm here, how I um, put my meals together and take them to go. And then I'm going to sit down and answer all of the SIBO questions and the gut questions, just kind of run through all of that and what this diet's going to look like. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoy this video. Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. I feel like I have to say that. I feel like that's what all the other YouTubers say. Um, but y'all know the drill. So anyways, let's get started. Okay, so I've already had breakfast, but we're going to throw together a little pre and post workout. Every time I do this, something goes wrong. I swear, I don't have rice made. I ran out last night and I was going to make it this morning and it just like slipped my mind. So I'm meeting my dad for lunch at Chipotle, so I'm probably honestly just gonna ask them to like throw some rice in a little like tub and give it to me. Um, the reason I'm not eating Chipotle and I'm eating this is because my bloat is so bad after I eat like high sodium food or just honestly any, it's bad all the time, but it's even worse eating out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my own because I am going to the gym and I don't wanna look like a water balloon, but Yes, I am ripping this with my hands because I just don't have time to be extra. See, the biggest thing in being consistent with all of this and weighing your food, cooking your food, constantly tracking all of, like whatever, you have to make it sustainable. So do you really think every single Sunday I'm gonna cook and chop up and prep my food? No, it's, it's not gonna happen. So what I do is cook everything in bulk. I put it in tubs or sometimes I leave it in the pot. And then as I'm leaving, I just throw my meal together. So, got my chicken done. I'm not gonna sit there and waste time cutting it. Like, what for why? Why? Um, and then we're gonna throw some green beans in there. Green beans have been the one vegetable that has settled well with me. Honestly, I didn't think broccoli and Brussels sprouts really had a big effect, but I'm just playing it super safe right now. When I'm on my diet, the only veggies I've been given are um, green beans and zucchini. So I like zucchini, so I'm kind of excited about that, but very easily digested um, greens. But yeah, so that's gonna be for five ounces of chicken, some green beans, and then I'll add rice to it for pre-workout. And then post-workout is gonna be the same thing. Um, in regards to how I cook my chicken, I put it on a pan and sprinkle some like McCormick dry seasoning on it. And then I just spray it with olive oil and stick it in the oven for like, mm, like 20, 25 minutes on 425. You don't want to cook it too long because it'll dry out. And then also when you microwave it back up, it's going to cook even more. So then it's really going to be dry. So as soon as you finish cooking it, immediately put it in like a tub and close the lid. Um, and then, like I said, I usually do it for 20 to 25 minutes or honestly just until 
you check it and you're like, is that done? Then it's done because remember, it's gonna cook a little more afterwards and when you reheat it. So you don't wanna like completely do it in the oven. It's just gonna be dry later on. Okay, so we got that. Some more green beans because health. And vegetables are really just for um, your micronutrients and then digestion to help with like fiber and all that good stuff. So if you do take a green supplement, that is fine. It's going to obviously be better getting it from whole foods and vegetables are gonna keep you fuller if you're on a diet, things like that. Um, I do notice a difference when, honestly, just when my overall fiber is up, not necessarily when I add vegetables or don't add vegetables, but I know it does help with digestion. So just be mindful of that. Get your greens in at least, at least once a day. Try to get twice. We're always gonna add salt. I usually use pink Himalayan salt so I can get all the electrolytes, but I don't have that right now. I need to go get some more. When I'm on this diet, I also can only season my food with salt and pepper. I don't get to use any sort of seasonings. Garlic and onion are very, very bad for um, like SIBO and the gut and they're very high FODMAP foods that are not usually easily digested. So I have to cut those out. And then I also cannot have artificials. So like GQs, Everything, I swear everything has artificials. So there's really not even an option with that. Um, and again, this is just to keep everything as clean as possible. We're literally trying to clean out all the bacteria in my gut and we don't want anything interfering um, that might just stop or slow down the process. So that being said, I'm gonna add some rice to this when I get to lunch and then I'll add some to the post-workout meal too. I usually eat like chicken and rice pre-workout and then when I get to the gym, they have those little like protein balls I'm obsessed with. And those are honestly, I like them before my workout because they're a little higher in fat. So they kind of slow down my digestion. So it slows down the nutrients getting into my body throughout my workout. So it, so it will sustain me a little bit longer. You don't want to have high fat with your post-workout meal because you want that food to be digested as quick as possible. And if you're having high fats, it's slowing down your digestion. If that makes sense. Um, and then sometimes I'll even like, if I eat this way too early, like before my workout, I'll have another meal, which will usually be like oatmeal with protein or something like that. I just want to make sure I get a meal in at least an hour before my workout. Um, if not sooner, if I can digest it quick enough. But you don't wanna wait, honestly, any more than three, three and a half hours before getting your post-workout in meal. Because the thing is, you wanna have nutrients to, one, fuel your body during your workout, and two, repair the muscle. And if you're not eating quickly post-workout, then what it, what is your body using for energy? Because you're depleted. I mean, you just trained, your glycogen stores are depleted. It's gotta pull from somewhere, so you don't want it pulling from that muscle. Um, so that's why we want to get our protein in before and after. So we're constantly having a source of protein and like protein stores throughout our whole duration of our training. Okay, so now that that's done, let's get into the gut stuff. Okay, testing one, two, three, four, five. I feel very close to this right now. What's up, y'all? It's a different day. It's literally a week later from when I made that intro because I don't know it's just been hectic getting on this diet and my energy has crashed I kind of felt like I had the flu like when you first start prep or start a new diet or start I don't know my hormones are all messed up I'm getting off birth control I got off Anabar I'm just a little out of it but it's okay it's now Friday so I have been on the diet for five days um, I'm gonna kind of get take off from the beginning that way I can explain everything in depth and then if y'all have further questions, you can leave them in the comments or send me a DM and I will answer those, but I know there's a lot that goes into this. So I'm going to do these weekly updates. So this will be obviously week one. And honestly, it's probably smart of me to do the update at the end of the week and then I'll post it the following Monday. So like this coming Monday, I'll post this. Y'all will be watching it right now. And then that'll be for the previous week. So, okay, where do we start? Um, so basically, I was in off-season for 13 months, put on as much mass as I could, 
And I realized, you know what, we need to fix your gut before we prep for a show. So what's wrong with my gut, for those of you that don't know, I explained a little bit in, in the last video, but basically this last prep, I just started bloating. Like no matter what I ate, no matter what I did, it was daily, all the time, especially after I worked out. Um, I did an elimination diet where I cut out gluten, dairy, eggs, I've cut out, you know, protein powder, I've, everything you could possibly think of to keep it bare minimum. And I was just still bloating no matter what I ate. So I was like, okay, something's wrong. Like it's clearly not what I'm intaking. So the first step was for me to, I reached out to a coach online, um, a functional medicine coach. She ordered me a GI map. And basically what that is, you sit in your stool and they sent back a basically lab work of every single bacteria that is in your gut um, as well as like parasites and things like that. So basically you can break that down and figure out, you know, look further into what's wrong with you. And it goes into the colon, the stomach, the large and small intestine, everything. So that being said, it showed that I had a lot of things wrong, but the main things were H. pylori and then there was a lot of bacteria. It didn't show I had SIBO, but there's a lot of bad bacteria built up in my gut that can be related to it. SIBO is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. Um, so just basically a lot of bad bacteria built up head to toe. So we knew obviously there's an issue and like trying to figure out what's causing that. So I did show a slight gluten, not intolerance, but um, elevation and inflammation. So that's when we did that elimination diet and the bloating actually got worse, but I also increased my carbs at the same time. So I have been in an off season and I wanted to increase carbs to continue bulking, but also try to heal my gut. So the thing with SIBO is the bacteria feeds off carbs and certain sugars like fructose, stuff like that. So me feeding my body more carbs, even though it was all clean carbs, like rice and potatoes pretty much, um, it's still feeding off of those carbs. So it didn't matter if they were clean or not. So the bloating got worse. That's what made me think, okay, this is probably is SIBO because SIBO is known to feed off carbohydrates and it produces gases. So, so there's hydrogen dominant and methane dominant. I went and got tested at the doctor. You can actually do a breath test where you blow into tubes. Um, actually, I think I sent it in. They gave it to me and then I sent it in. And basically I'm methane dominant. So I produce, according to them, like six times the amount of methane that the average person should in their gut, which is essentially what's causing the bloating in. One second. Okay, sorry. So once I figured out I had methane dominant SIBO, I was like, okay, let's treat the SIBO. And there's an antibiotic, I cannot remember the name of it. I will go and find it and put it up here. But there were two antibiotics that I, I'm going to, sorry. Okay, there were two antibiotics that I took and basically there was, this was through my GI. So I was working with um, the functional medicine coach and then she was sending me to my GI so I could actually get like testing and stuff done and get prescriptions prescribed. So there's a natural way to go about curing SIBO and then you can do antibiotics. So I went the antibiotic route first, um, but the thing with the antibiotics is it kills the good and bad bacteria. The natural way will not kill as much of the, the good bacteria. But I went and did it, there was no diet change. There was there was no change in anything except your basic like low, stay low FODMAP, no alcohol, stuff like that. Um, but absolutely no change in my gut after the 14 days of being on the antibiotics. So I was like, okay, that's not gonna work. Next step. So I reached out to another functional medicine coach just to get you know a second opinion, a little more insight. And that's who I'm currently working with. And he basically looked at my GI map and was like, you're just gonna have to do the SIBO protocol, which honestly, all the bacteria that was built up in me, basically it's, you go through this kill phase, which is what I'm doing right now. So everything is so built up that starving the bacteria. So a lot of people, that's what a lot of people do. They'll starve it. They'll eat really clean, really low carb. But the thing is you're starving the bacteria, but it's not necessarily killing it. So what I am doing is I'm on a very low carb diet. Well, I'll get to the protocol in a minute. Anyways. So I said, all right, let's do the protocol. I wanted to finish my off season, just screw the bloating. I was gonna have to face it, deal with it every day. And then once I started this diet, my off season would be over. I would do the gut protocol. Um, and then I would go in and start a prep for a show. 
So that's currently where we're at. We're in week one of the gut protocol. Now what the gut protocol protocol is, is basically he has looked at the bacteria that I have and taken certain supplements and diet and we're doing this for about 12 weeks and it's called the kill phase. So basically what we're doing right now is killing all of that bacteria while trying to keep what good we can and then we're going to start from the ground up. So we're going to slowly rebuild that bacteria um, and hopefully everything will be good. Now, I was like, okay, what caused the bacteria build up? You know, because if I go through all of this, what if I'm eating something that's causing it and then it just happens again, I have to go through all of this again. So we were talking and he didn't realize I was on birth control. And apparently I've been on the oral pill for about five years now. I had very bad symptoms when I was little. I couldn't get out of bed, anything like that. So I got on the pill. Um, honestly, it fixed everything. Very, very low hormonal dosage. I didn't have mood swings anymore. I was feeling great. So that was, I like never thought birth control would have anything to do with my gut. I was wrong. So apparently oral birth control, since it's going through your di digestive tract, I cannot talk today. It can lower your pH, which is, or I'm sorry, raise your pH, which is going to lower the acidity in your gut, which is going to cause you to not be able to break down food because you don't have the acid. Um, so that can cause a buildup in the gut. And apparently it's very common for people with this issue to be on birth control. And I mean, a majority of girls are on birth control, so it's hard to say. Um, I did talk about doing the IUD because that is like a regulated space just in your uterus that it's not going to go through the gut so it wouldn't affect this. But I am just going to try to get off of it altogether for the first time in literally like five, six years. I don't know how long I've been on it, probably longer than that. Um, and see how my body responds now that I'm older and not, not as much change is happening as it was when I was 15, 16. Um, so yeah, it, I'll be very interested to see um, how I respond to that. So it's a lot of change kind of going on at once. So as far as what the protocol entails, basically I was at around 450 carb, 3000 calories. I was like full setting my um, off season because I wanted to put on as much weight as possible because I knew on this diet, I was gonna have to go so low calorie, I was gonna lose a ton of weight. So I at least wanted to start from a high point. Um, the reason we're not tapering down is because it's just gonna take longer. This is already a 12 to 16 week protocol. I wanna get it done with. So we're tape we're pulling macros immediately, but we're also pulling output immediately. So my training is going down to four days a week. Um, I'm not doing, we're, we're, bleh, I'm not worrying about any steps. Um, I'm not doing any cardio. I'm literally just like on my days off, I'm just not moving. I'm trying to keep my output as low as possible. That way I'm not in too much of a deficit because weight loss is not my goal. It's just something that kind of has to happen with this because we can't feed the bacteria with the carbs. So now I'm at 150 carb, which is very low for me. I start prep at usually 200, 240. So just to put that into perspective, I got down to 8% body fat naturally at honestly the lowest I ever got, I think was 1560 in calories. Um, and now we're starting at 1800. I don't think it's going to get any lower, which is good, but it already, that is a big shock to my body already. Um, so that, like I said, this is week one and I'm feeling it, getting off that birth control, um, and starting this low calorie diet, basically slashing my calories by half. Um, it's been, it's been rough, but we're hanging in there. So basically what it entails, very clean food. So chicken, beef, veggies, I can have eggs, plain rice cakes, peanut butter, um, zucchini and green beans. So very light vegetables that are easy on the gut. Um, only seasoning with salt and pepper. So there's onion and garlic are very, very sensitive, um, or the gut is typically very sensitive to those two items. So we're cutting those out. And then what else? Um, so no caffeine, because we want to keep me in a parasympathetic state. Oh, you can see her right there. <laughs> um, oh God, I cannot. Um, <laughs> we want to control, we want to keep everything very basically low stress, keep my cortisol levels down. That's why I'm not doing high strenuous training. My training is going to be at like 75% because um, it all plays a part in the gut. So that's that. Um, obviously no alcohol, no gluten, no dairy, basically I, nothing. I can't eat anything. I have, um, a very long list of supplements that I'm taking 
what they are and what they do. I cannot exactly tell you that. I am not an expert in this field, but I will say um, I, I can link my coach down below and that way if you are interested, you can go down and take a look. I also don't want anyone else following this exact diet because it can do a lot more harm than good. If you don't have this bacteria in your body or let's just say you don't have SIBO or this is not your issue or you bloat, but it could be from a million different other reasons. Uh. Bloating is so common. I don't want you to hop on all these supplements and hop on this low calorie diet and screw yourself up even worse because that is very, very possible. Uh, and as far as my symptoms go, it's really just the bloating. I never really had, I never had constipation, which is a huge sign of SIBO. Um, I actually had very good bowel movement and I started to have pretty bad heartburn. That's from the H. pylori and I didn't talk about that, but H. pylori is just another bacteria in your stomach that basically to put it in simple terms, doesn't allow your body to break down food properly. So it's very, very common for people to have H. pylori. Apparently like 80% of the population does. They just don't know it. But mine, kind of everything is just coming into effect. But yeah, I will do weekly updates just to let y'all know what's going on. Do some physique updates. I didn't upload like my physique update here just because I haven't done one yet. one yet. This week has been rough. Maybe I'll record a little tomorrow. Maybe I'll just post this as is. I don't know yet, but appreciate all the love and support. Y'all have been amazing. This has been so cool just to have like a support system as I'm going through this because I didn't have social media last prep. I did, but I wasn't very active on it. And now I feel like I just have this whole support system that anytime I feel down or feel like I'm having a rough day or I can't get through it, I just have all my people to back me up so that's pretty cool too and y'all have never seen me cut before which is also kind of cool because it's going to be fun but yeah um let me know if you have any questions like i said you can leave them in the comments or shoot me a dm and i will make sure to keep doing these updates for y'all so yeah I, thanks for watching and i hope you'll have a fantastic week if you're watching this on monday if you're doing cardio keep going i'm sorry this video wasn't longer um but yeah Okay, bye guys. Okay, I was gonna end the video there, but it is Sunday, so I wanted to do like a physique update for y'all um, since it kind of is the week end of week one and kind of go over basically just how I changed this first week. So Sunday, last Sunday, I had pizza and I was up like six pounds. My body fluctuates, like I said, very easily. So these first few weigh-ins are not accurate. A lot of it is just gonna be water weight leaving my body and then it's gonna kind of slow, um, slow down as far as like weight loss goes. So Monday I was 160 and I'll actually put the weights right here. That way y'all can kind of just see them and not listen to me spit them out. Um, but basically I've been averaging a 2000 calorie um, output. So I've been trying to keep it as low as possible. My input is 1800 right now or my intake. So that's around a 200 calorie deficit, not too, too bad. And then actually on my rest days, like yesterday was a rest day and I only burned 1500. So I was technically in a surplus, which is great because my goal, like I said, is not to lose weight here. I'm basically just trying to fix my gut, keep all the lean mass I can. And then later on we'll reverse and diet for my show. So, um, I'll do some posing and then as well as just like a basic standard physique update for y'all just so y'all can kind of see where I'm at. Like I said, I'm very flat right now, which stinks. Um, today was actually my lowest weigh in so far. I haven't been this low in a month and right now I'm sitting at uh, 148 exactly. So super exciting. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and add that in there right now and then...